Okay, we started on the introduction to evil last week, and we didn't finish. And we'll continue with Webster's 1828 Dictionary of Evil. And we say right now, if the phone rings, I apologize. And would you pray for my ear infection? Just a lot of pain. But. So we were looking at the 1828 Webster's Dictionary of Evil. And having bad qualities of the natural kind. Mischievous, having qualities which lead to injury or produce mischief. Having bad qualities of moral kind, wicked, corrupt, perverse, wrong, as evil thoughts, evil deeds, evil speaking, and evil generation. Unfortunate, unhappy, producing sorrow, distress, injury, or calamity, or evil tidings, evil arrows, evil days, or an ear infection. And it's very sore. I mean, the... The ear infection I have is not evil. <laughs> I've had many ear infections and sometimes been caused by getting water in from swimming or taking a shower. Uh, this may be, I don't know what it is, but the ear infection is not evil. It's, it's a good illustration because you would think it's evil. I don't know why I have the ear infection, but what is the result of the evil of the ear infection? Pain. Suffering, it's taking forever. So you see, when we look at the word evil, it's not, you know, oh, you got this disease, it's got to be evil. No. The, ca the cause of the disease could be evil, sin. The reactions from the disease, pain, suffering, is evil. Evil is natural or moral. Evil, uh, natural evil is anything which produces pain. As I said, distress, loss, or calamity. A tornado comes. What's the evil? The destruction. Now, is the tornado evil itself? No, it's a weather ph phenomenon. <laughs> an earthquake. Is an earthquake evil? No, it's a weather from well, not weather, but it's an earthly phenomenon that causes destruction, pain, loss. Or which of any disturbs the peace, impairs the happiness, or destroys the perfection of natural beings. So when we look at evil, there's a, there's a great word to be described as cause and effect. And the reason why I'm studying this, this verse, we're going to look at some verses in a moment, is people will charge God with evil as a sin. But the consequences that God has given are the evil because of sin. Why does God allow babies to die? That's so wicked. That's not wicked. The wickedness is that, God, that man, Adam and Eve, disobeyed God. God warned us. God loved us. He said, do not eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for thou shalt surely die. They sinned. And what is the evil of that sin? What produces the pain, the sorrow? Children die. Loved ones die. Earthquakes happen. Tornadoes happen. Ear infections happen. Had Adam and Eve never disobeyed God in that garden and eaten that fruit, Genesis chapter 3, there would be no evil, but there was evil, the devil. If Adam and Eve would have taken the fruit of the tree of life, God would have prevented them from going to the tree of knowledge of good and evil as he prevented them to the tree of life by eating the tree of knowledge of good and of the of the good and uh, evil. The devil brought the consequences of evil. What is the react? What is the evil of the devil that God's going to pronounce on him? God's going to cast him off in the lake of fire that burns forever. All wickedness, okay? Yeah, so evil is a consequence of sin, and evil can be sin. It, I don't know if that's synonym or ant, whatever those, that word is, but evil is one of those words, yeah, 
Smoking is evil. Lung cancer is evil. God never sins. He's holy and he's righteous. And yet he plays part in evil. The consequences of sin. All crimes. All crimes. I like what Webster says, all crimes. All violations of law and right are moral evils. Murder in a court and found guilty is an evil. A $15 parking ticket found in a court that you are guilty is an evil. Jaywalking is evil. Breaking into you a house is evil. Slander in a courtroom, bribery in a courtroom is evil. Diseases, here we go, are natural evils, but they often proceed from moral evils. Webster's got, I guarantee that that definition number four is not in your dictionary today in the classroom. And number four is why we're doing this study. God never sins. And yet God says he brings about evil. But he never sins. I am a sinner. I sometimes maybe lie to get out of trouble or, or uh, stretch a story more for my own being. What is the evil? I lied. What is the characteristics of that sin? I ruined my character. I become untrustworthy. I come unfaithful to the truth. <clears throat> Number five, misfortune, mischief, injury. Depravity, corruption of heart. This is Webster. I'm not quoting from the, from the Bible yet. <clears throat> corruption of the heart, disposition to commit wickedness, malignity. So evil needs to be understood by the definition of Webster and by what the Bible says. Again, it is an act of a sin. And it is an act because of sin. And it become natural. If a wind blows a branch off a tree onto your windshield. Your windshield being destroyed is evil. Is the wind evil? No. You can use wind to, to propel windmills and operate machinery or make electricity. Your house has become flooded by the river flooding. <laughs> now, is the river evil? No. I mean, you can get water from, from the river. You can get fish from the river, whatever. What was the produce of the river that was evil? The flooding. What evil does man do? He sins. All sins. What evil has God done? Well, he causes sickness. He causes death. He causes judgment. He causes turmoil. He causes distress. He causes injury. He causes calamity. But he never sins. Now, let's look at, I guess this is going to be a long study. The context is we got the introduction. Again, I want to look at cause and effect. We got adjective. Got evil as a, and you could come up with your own. This is what I came up with. Number two, bad deed. Number three, criminal and capital punishment. Number four, good is evil and evil is good. Now we got one other video before this one. You find on our YouTube and you can find on uh, our SoundCloud. Good versus evil, number five. Number six, the heart. And this will be all from the scriptures. Number seven, innocent or innocence. Number eight, judgment of God. Number nine, knowledge. Number 10, misery, pain, suffering. Number 11, protection. Number 12, rebellion. Number 13, rebel, uh, excuse me, religion. Number 14, repentance. Number 15, sexual. Number 16, sin. 17, sowing and reaping. 18, the spirit. 19, stealing or theft. 20, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. 
21, unwell. 22, a verb, action. I love that word. 23, warning. Warning. Now take your Bible, still in the introduction, Job 2.10. And these three verses is why I want to do, why I put this study for us. Job 2.10, but he said unto her, his wife, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. <laughs> Whoa, Job. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Yes, yeah, that's, that's the prosperity. Yeah, God gives us good. Amen. God gives us blessing. God gives us mercy. God is, lo is loving kindness. Good. That's a comma. Shall he, we not receive evil? Job says God gives us good. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Job says not also evil. Now, what was the evil that, that God allowed Satan in Job's life? One and two chapters. He allowed his children to die, all of them, by a whirlwind. He allowed all his animals to die or get captured, his servants to be killed. And he allowed the devil to attack Job with boils from head to toe. This ear infection I got. Is it of God? I don't know. Is it of the devil? I don't know. Is it my own doing? I don't know. But I have a ailment. Is ear infection evil? No. The pain, the suffering I do, that's the evil. The ear infection, and even you can say the pain and suffering, that's really not evil too. Because you know what the pain's telling me? Brain? Something wrong with our ear over here. And pain in our body say, hey, brain. This is a little toe. Pay attention. We just hit the coffee table. Turn the light on. Now, your little toe hurts because you hit the coffee to uh, table in the middle of the night. Getting up. Is that evil? <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's pain, but it's a warning. <laughs> Next time you get up, turn the light on. Now, let's say something, because I got diabetes and I got poor circulation in my feet and I, I got I got foot problems with diabetes. Let's say my foot, my toe starts screaming in pain to my brain. And it warns me there's something wrong. The diabetes is causing evil of pain, but also the pain could be a warning. You need to take care of me. So sometimes evil can be good. When your body cries out in pain and suffering, hey, you got to pay attention. Something's wrong. Now, when a tornado comes and it wipes through a, 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 an area, and houses are destroyed, the destruction of the houses are the evil. There's no warning. <laughs> now, the tornado is not the evil. It's a phenomenon. And all this Job sin and all this did not Job sin with his lips. Isaiah 45, 7. Now let's say let's take the tornado warning for a moment. Let's say, all right, the weather forecast is they put up all the, the sirens, the, the horns are blaring. There's a tornado, there's a tornado. Warning, warning, take shelter. And farmer John's out in his field and he hears that warning, and he's still out there plowing or milking or whatever he's doing out in the field, and that tornado comes and kills him. Is a tornado evil? No. It's a phenomenon. Is the death of the farmer evil? Well, if the farmer would have had listened to the warnings and gotten in shelter, he wouldn't have died. 
If Adam and Eve had listened to God and not taken that fruit and sinned, there would be no consequences. There would be no sowing and reaping, and there'd be no cause and effect. Isaiah 45, 7, I form light, God. God makes light. Where does light come from? God. I create darkness. Where does darkness come from? God. Is not the darkness also throughout the Bible? Is it not reference to evil and the devil and wickedness? Yes. And God said, I make the darkness. Darkness is not evil. Darkness is saying, hey, this is what's bad. And we're talking reference to the devil and powers that be. And light is, is, is good because that represents Jesus. So God has given us light and darkness saying, hey, this is right and this is wrong. And in that, that's not evil. That's a revelation by God. And there's some things that are light and dark, just spoken out by the word of God. Say, if you walk in the darkness, you're without excuse. And whatever you do in the darkness, when the Bible says not to do it, the consequences of being in the dark and away from the light, everything that happens to you in the darkness is evil. But the darkness is not evil itself. Come to the light. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I make peace, God says. And create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. You mean the Lord sins? He created evil. God never sins. God will not make you sin any sin you can think of. Matter of fact, when Jesus Christ came, God manifested bless. He never sinned. He was without sin, without fault. But he created some evil. He said, what? He sure got the Pharisees upset. He got them in an uproar. He got the Sadducees up in an uproar. He put the silence in scribes. The effects of Jesus in this ministry for the bad was he upset the religious people. For the good, people were healed. People got rid of leprosy. People got be able to see. People were able to hear. And people got to know the Father a lot better. Light and darkness. You're going to smoke a cigarette? Cigarettes evil? Yeah, okay, they're evil. But if I were to put a cigarette in an empty house on the floor, and no one ever moves into that house, what's the evil of that cigarette? Let's say that cigarette stays in the house, and listen, the church is raptured out, the seven years of the tribulation period has come and gone, and the millennium, has, has the thousand years has come and gone, and the heavens and earth fly away, and, and they're burnt up in, the, in, in, in fervent heat, that Peter said, and that cigarette that, that was in that house, and that house burned up forever. What, did that, what evil did that cigarette do? Now, I'm not, I am not, you know, for cigarettes. I'm against them. But what did that cigarette do? It didn't do nothing at all. There was no evil in that cigarette. Now, if somebody picks up that cigarette and smokes it, and he smokes more, and he smokes more, and he smokes more, and one day he goes to the doctor, and the doctor says, you got lung cancer. You got emphysema. The lung cancer and the emphysema is the evil from smoking any tobacco product. Same with alcohol and cirrhosis of the liver and alcoholism. Being a worthless drunk is the evil from drinking alcohol to the excess or any alcohol. God did not create. He said, well, God created the marijuana leaf, so it's okay to smoke. Yeah, okay, God created the marijuana leaf. 
What does a marijuana leaf do if it's just out there growing in the wild and doesn't do nothing? Nothing. What is the evil of the marijuana leaf? And I'm not saying I, I am for marijuana. But what is the evil? Nothing. What do you do if you pick that marijuana and you do what you have to do? I don't know what you do with it. And you put it in, in uh, rolling papers and then you put it to your lips and you light it and you smoke it. And your brain gets fried. What's the evil? Your brain getting fried. So yeah, God made marijuana leaves. But God never intended, never made you smoke it. God made tobacco. And from what I'm told, tobacco is, is a great rat killer or something like that. It's a good pesticide. He never meant, he never intended man to smoke it. Imagine Sir Walter Riley going back to England and saying, hey, I found this thing. We stick it in our mouth. We put fire to it. We're going to lock them up in the loony bin. So that answers the question, God made the marijuana, God made the tobacco. Yeah, answer the question. Yeah, he did. God made dandelions in, in the bulb. You're not supposed to eat it and get it off into a loony bin world. Who made the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? I don't know. I've heard some say God and heard some say the devil. And yet, whoever made it, if God made it, let's say God made it, he said not to eat of it. He warned. So the marijuana leaf, tobacco leaf, plant, whatever they use, the hops, the barley, they make alcohol and the water. Hey! Smoking and drinking or eating and then getting your body in trouble, that's the evil. What's, what's wrong with the marijuana? What is the ref reflex of? What is the afterworth? What is the effect, Eunice, of that leaf when it's smoked? Mold. Mold can do harmful things, especially here in Florida in the rainforest. And I, I don't know what I'm talking about here, but I'm going to say, as you turn to Lamentations 338, and from my basic understanding is you can take mold and make penicillin. Is penicillin mold evil? No. Mold can cause an evil. It can cause you to have lung problems. It can cause health problems. And it can destroy your building. I know about missionaries who've had buildings destroyed because of mold. Also, mold which is not evil, can also make penicillin, which can be used to treat evil, pain, and suffering, and ailments of the body. Antibiotics is not evil. It can treat evil, diseases, and, and uh, infections. But an antibiotic can become an evil. How can it be? You take too much antibiotics and you take too much antibiotic, and your body gets used to antibiotics. Then the antibiotic, the good that the antibiotic does to the evil of diseases has no effect any longer. And that's what the one of the things, diabetes are saying with my ear infection. And I've had so many ear infections, so many antibiotics, both of them together are, don't want to work for the good. And in a way, they're becoming evil because they're becoming ineffective. And I hope I'm not going out of, out of way out of this. Lamentations 338. Out of, most, out of the mouth of the Most High, God, proceeds not evil and good. Now, can you just picture God who says, be holy for I am holy. Can you picture God up there four-letter words? The bad four-letter words? Can you picture God cussing? Can you picture God when he says you're not to take my name in vain? Can you picture God taking the name of Jesus Christ in vain? Absolutely not. So what is the evil that comes out of the mouth of God? 
The consequences of not listening to God. You don't want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? The, co the consequence of the evil that would come out of Jesus' mouth would be, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That's a consequence. Where God will cast you off in the lake of fire and it burns forever. Out of the mouth of the most high, not evil. Would not out of the mouth of God in glory say, a saved or a lost man? I've had enough of him. Take his life. How about Job 1 and 2? What evil proceeded out of the mouth of God? Go ahead, Satan, do it. But don't do this. There was mercy in the outcomes of Job's life, the evil. You know, you know what the mercy is? When God says, listen, I've had enough, that's it for a Christian. And he died. Okay, death, the evil, the consequences of the man not listening to God. What is what is the mercy of God? You go home to be you be you go home to glory, absent from the body and present with the Lord. Paul said at one time the man that was having fornication with his with his father's wife turned that man over to the devil. So the devil will beat his hide or the devil will tear him up so he will get right like Job did. The devil told the the devil toiled and travailed Job. In the end, Job got right with God. God may it's chastising. It's a father saying, son, come with me in the bedroom or wherever you go. The evil comes out of the mouth. What is the, he's going to spank his kid? Only America believes that. No, the evil coming out of the mouth is, I am going to pronounce judgment to your behind because you have sinned. You've done wrong. You disobeyed your mother. And now the evil is your butt is going to be red. The evil is not the rod. The evil is not the father. The evil is not chastisement. The evil is your butt is going to hurt. Why? Because you've done wrong. And God out of his mouth for Christians or for lost people or, you know, the Old Testament saints that were right and the Old Testament saints that were wrong would be, okay, I got to allow this to happen. David? Yes, Lord. You sin with Bathsheba. You sin with Uriah. And God says, you did it in secret. I am going to do it out in the opening. And I'm going to use your son. The evil was that his son, uh, Absalom, took his concubine up, in the, up in, the, in, the, in the open air of all Jerusalem and had sexual relations with all those women. That was the evil. And evil may happen to others and not just yourself. And you've got to realize the evil of sin affects others. When you decide to go out and get drunk and drive that car and you go kill somebody, you have affected your family and you have affected the family of those that you killed. Now, is the alcohol evil? No. You drinking it, you drinking it to the excess, you getting in that car, is the car evil? No. You turn on the keys and the ignition and you put it in drive, is that evil? No. Being in the intoxicating mode that you are, that is the evil. And then killing somebody, that's the evil. What is the consequence? You killed a life, you ruined your family, and you ruined another family. And you destroyed your car. And you probably lost your job. You caused tears, heartache, pain. You're going to probably be in a hospital. Maybe a hospital for other people in the car. God does not sin. Job 2.10. Isaiah 45.7. And Lamentations 3.38. He does not sin. But he will cause evil. Job 1 and 2. And when we find out with, the, with Job is, God had a purpose. The devil's purpose was to destroy the righteousness of Job. 
God's purpose was, Job, you got to be a sinner. You got to be too self-righteous. And there are times when God does evil in our life for our good, and that's called chastisement. That's called correction. Sometimes that pain we have is not absolutely evil. It may be our body saying, hey, there's a... Now, after you realize what the problem is and you got to get going on it, okay, now it becomes an evil. Now it's pain, suffering. But first it was a warning. So let's get off evil being wicked all the time. And that's Hollywood. That's the movies. That's television. Evil can be good. Evil can be done by God, but God can never sin. So not all evil is sin. Now, when I have destroyed my testimony, I have destroyed my family, I have destroyed my character because I step out on my wife and I sleep with another woman. That whole thing is evil. Adultery is evil. Because you have no business to being in a bed of another person that is not your spouse. And the evil that follows with that, divorce. No one trusts you. Well, they're not supposed to trust you. Not in America today. Sin causes evil. God don't sin. But God causes evil because you sin. And sin can be evil. We got to get that. And then there's a natural evil. But the natural evil is not the evil. The after, they, they call it the aftermath. Insurance co companies call it an act of God. You see the insurance company. You see, if the tree falls on your car, if, if the, you know, the water comes in uh, over your basement, those are an insurance policy, and I've seen it, and I, I've underlined them, and I highlighted them. They are called, I don't know about today, but they used to call it an act of God. You know what you're saying? That the result of the tornado, the result of the flooding, the result of the rainstorm, the result of the snow, the result of weather phenomenon, or the result of the earthly phenomenon is the evil that God caused God done wrong. But it says here in Isaiah 45, 7, God created the evil. God made the wind. God made the tornadoes. And they are not evil. All right. Take a place on the earth. I'm thinking in my mind a desert, okay? Where there's no houses, no built, no nothing. Not even trees. It's just sand. Or you take an area out in the middle of the ocean, there's no boats, there's no nothing. You, you got a sandstorm, or I forget what they call it now, the, the water tornado. A war, no, I forget what they call it. But you got that tornado in the water. And it does its thing, and it's out there, and it causes no troubles, and it causes no problem. But it, it's a phenomenon. Nothing happens. There's no damage. There's no trouble. Okay? It's a weather phenomenon. It's a dust storm. It's a tornado. It's a water spout. Okay, that water spout. It, it does its thing. It's out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And then it hits a ship. And a ship gets damaged. The ship being damaged, okay, that's the evil. Now, that war spout, if it kept on doing, doing what it did and died out and nothing happened, there would have been no evil. If that, if that war spout came on land and destroyed a beach, okay, destroying a beach would have been the evil. Now, God made that whirlwind. God made the weather. 
But the devil also made the weather in Job chapter 1 when he blew the wind on and destroyed the house that killed Job's family. So it's not always an act of God. It could be the devil. The devil's going to be doing great and wonderful signs of Antichrist in the tribulation period. And see, we got to get off with this story, with this study of evil. We got to stop blaming God. Why did God allow that? It could have been the devil. Why did the devil do it? It could have been God. And God caused David to number the children of Israel. And he run over to Chronicles and he run over to Samuel. And the, and the devil caused David to name the number of Israel. Who did it? Both of them. Now, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I want them people to believe, you know, we didn't go to the moon. I'm, one, I'm just one of them people. You're not going to. Maybe the weather was caused by the government. Maybe they have that techno. I don't know. Who don't get me going. I'm just saying, what if that third possibility it wasn't God, it wasn't the devil, but man? Who was the man that came up and took tobacco and said, hey, we're going to smoke this? Was it God or was it the devil? All right, who was the first man that said, hey, there's a pretty red tomato. I think I'm going to slice it up, put some salt and pepper on it. I'm going to eat it. Now, are tomatoes bad for you? No. Is there an evil of eating tomatoes? The only worst thing you can get from evil tomatoes when you eat too many and your face starts breaking out. I've had that happen. You may get an upset stomach, maybe, and I, I never had that happen with some people. There is no trouble with someone say, hey, I'll eat that tomato. Hey, these things are good. I want to have one. There's no evil. Tomatoes are good for you. But the guy that grabbed the tobacco said, hey, roll this up in this paper here. Stick it in your mouth and light it on fire. And inhale. <coughs> oh, don't worry. You'll get over that. <coughs> don't worry. You'll get over that. And I just keep on doing it. What's the evil? The Surgeon General says that continue being exposed to cigarette and tobacco products could cause emphysema, could cause cancer. Could... As far as I know, there is no warning about eating tomatoes. But when you know now that there is a trouble and a problem, listen, for centuries, doctors suggested smoking cigarettes was good for you. Nobody knew. But when the evil has been exposed, don't do it. That, that tree of knowledge, good and evil, sat in that garden I don't know how long, until the day that God said, Adam, don't you dare eat that. Look at potato. Somebody dug up this, the potato, dug it out of the ground, and cut it up and say, oh, French fries. Mashed potatoes. Twice baked to, to, to potatoes. And according to my doctor, and this is not for everybody now. According to my doctor, as bad as a diabetic I am, and, and for all diabetes, potatoes are a no-no. Don't eat them no longer. And yet, you know, I have, I have read that you could survive on a potato. A potato has all the nutrients. And that could be wrong, but this is what I read. A potato has all, you could eat potatoes all your life. Is there evil? No. What was the evil? On Tuesday this week, doctor said, told me that if I eat potatoes, potatoes are a poison to me. With my diabetes and my health conditions of my test results. So if I continue to eat potatoes and my body reacts to those potatoes wrongly, is the potato evil? Absolutely not. Other people can eat them, enjoy them, have no health problems. For me, the evil of the potato would be the health problems that I have been warned about. And where do we get a warning from God about the consequences of evil? Genesis to Revelation, the King James 1611 Bible. And even some modern Bibles have that. 
even some modern Bibles, will have, they have enough in there to tell you consequences of evil. The, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not are a warning that if you do, evil will be produced. <laughs> do not. And also, go ye in all the worlds and preach the gospel to every creature. If you do not, there's an evil coming. You're not going to get crowns. You're not going to get rewards. You're not going to see anybody in glory that are going to thank you for your work. There is a good consequence of sending missionaries out in the field. Converts, people growing, the word of God growing daily, as it says in the book of Acts. And there's also an evil of apostates, of religion going out. And Jesus says, you make them, I think, a twofold or threefold more child of the devil than yourselves. And the evil can be a anti of the good of God. You can eat certain foods and they can be good for you and have great effects on your body. But then again, if your body can't handle it, another one would be pork. We can eat pork. We are in the age of grace. We are not under law. We do not have to go through the dietary law that the seven-day Adventists say, but I can eat pork so much. Certain kinds of pork I can't eat. If I eat it, I'm going to have some evil consequences of eating it. There are people out there, and I've met them, if they have any form of pork. Under grace, saved by the grace of God, born again, going to heaven, child of God, Holy Spirit indwelling. If they eat any pork, it will completely destroy their body and digestion system. That's like me and the potatoes and someone else with potatoes. Pork is not... Pork today is not an evil. As some there are religions out there, pork is evil. No, it's not. There are people out there, fur is evil. No, it keep you warm. I just, I just lost a lot of people on that one. And we must look into, as we, Lord willing, get next time, but let's look again as a close, as a secondary introduction, the 1828 Webster's Dictionary of Evil. Number one, having bad qualities of a natural kind. There are people who are born to be evil. How do you prevent that? The blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse them of their souls. Every man is born a sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know how you change an evil person? You bring them the gospel and have them believe in the gospel, have them get saved and get the new birth and become the new creature. You know how the world treats it today, especially in America? Give them pills, give them drugs, but don't give them Jesus. Listen, when the president said, I'm going to allow prayer in school, you got Muslim prayers, you got Catholic prayers, you got Lutheran prayers, you got prayer books, you got prayer beads, you got prayer up and down all around and everywhere, you got prayer of the Muslims, you got prayer of the Hindu, you got prayer of the, you know, cross your legs and, and, and throw your mind in the garbage. I didn't hear him pray to the God of the Bible, I just heard prayer in school. Get it right, Christians. Mischievous, having qualities which tend to injury or produce mischief. Evil can produce bad things. So there is an evil that's evil that causes evil. 
Number two, having bad qualities of moral kind. Wicked, corrupt, perverse, wrong, as evil thoughts, evil deeds, evil speaking, an evil generation. Sinners, sin, sinning, sin. Duh. There's that. All have sinned. Everybody is capable of being evil. And they'll come up to me, oh, preacher, or, oh, you know, I'm a good pr Today, I, before I got sick, I went to go pass out gospel tracts. Like one woman took a gospel tract, and the second person, I told her, I said, can I give you something about the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, I'm good. No, you're not. You're evil. You're a sinner. You did not tell me I am saved, born again. Thank you for going out witnessing. You just said I'm good. If you're unwashed, you're not washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. You're not saved. You are evil. You're a sinner. All I've seen comes short of the glory of God. Unfortunate, number three, unhappy. Being unhappy is, e is evil? It's a consequence. It's not healthy for you. And there are people who are permanently unhappy. Depression is not good for you. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, oh, today you just woke up, oh, this is a bad day. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your lifestyle has now become unhappy. I'm unhappy at times now. My wife died. Both my wives died. I'm unhappy. But there are days I have good days. There are days I'm, jumping, I'm joking around. There are days I'm just upset. There's days, Lord, I got hope you'll find me another wife. And then there's, oh, God, why did you do it? But there are people out there who are continually, and some of them are hospitalized, some of them are institutionalized, some of them are just, it's an evil in their life. And the only ray of sunshine, the only light they're going to get would be Jesus Christ. And there are Christians who are saved, who have the being of being unhappy all the time. That's an evil because unhappy is not a fruit of the spirit, but love, joy, peace. They got something opposite of what the Holy Spirit would give them. Producing sorrow. Makes you sad. It's an event that's happened, that's evil. All right. Let's go back to tornado. Did the tornado cause sorrow? Yes. All right. Then the tornado is a form of evil. But it's not evil. We're going to see in a moment. The aftermath of a tornado causes sorrow. You can look at that tornado. Oh, look at that tornado go. And it doesn't do any damn. It may take down a tree. For the tree lovers, oh, I hope that tree. But if it does new personal human property, damn. It just goes right along. Wow, that thing is made. Look at it. And then it dies out. It didn't cause no sorrow. It's a tornado. It's not evil. The tornado rips through your house. That's not evil. But the aftermath of the tornado, that caused sorrow. Distress, injury, calamity, and as evil things, evil arrows, evil day. He's quoting from the Bible, Noah Webster. And then A from number three, evil. Evil is a natural or mor moral. Natural evil is anything which produces pain, Distress, loss of calamity, or which in any way distributes the peace. Death is a natural thing because Adam and Eve disobeyed God when he warned them. Impairs the happiness, here we go, or destroys the perfection of natural beings. Sin. Man gets older and, and weaker and sicker and Bent over and agony and pain and suffering and pills and, and muscle medicine and, and number four, all wickedness, all crime, all crimes, all violation of law and right are moral evils. Post that with Bible scriptures and Ten Commandments in the courtroom. Well, Your Honor, you know it was a black thing. You know, Your Honor, I grew up in a black world. You know, Your Honor, that, that cop was against me. Your Honor, you know, oh, violations of the law. I went to traffic court one time. And got, well, you know, I really had to go to the bathroom. And you could have pulled over and went in the bushes. 
But going 75 in a 25 mile per hour, oh, evil. There's no excuse. That's what's so bad about the law. The law says no excuse. Diseases are natural evils, but they are often produced by moral evil. A child dies because they're doing drugs. That's not normal. That's not natural. And it produces an evil, sadness, destruction in the family, death. Misfortune, number five, mischief, injury. Number six, depravity, corrupt, corruption of the heart or disposition to commit wickedness, malignity. It's a cause and effect. Now, let's get this down before we begin next week, Lord willing. Evil can be sin, but God never sins. God causes e evil. God made evil. Evil can be a consequence of sin. Evil can be both bearings. You got to rightly divide. What's the Bible say? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to rightly divide evil, and that's what we're going to set for in this study. There's a, there's a study before the introduction number one. There's a introduction number two. We're going to go as long as the Lord will have us to do it. I'm not in no rush. There's one before this. Get this out to your friends, your enemies, your co-workers, your family, your friends, your pastor, your, your church buddies, your brethren. Get it out. Again. If you tamper with this message, I have no copyright. If you tamper with this message, it's between you and God and God and you. And you'll result in evil. <laughs> okay? I do this for the honor and glory of God. 